Hello, and welcome to the Church Nerd Podcast. This is Andrew. Hey, everyone. I want to ask, do I have to care about other people's hobbies or interests? What does the Bible say about that? Let me tell you a story. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in a long text conversation with a bunch of friends, at which point they started talking about following the Europa Cup that was going on at the time. Um, A bunch of Premier League teams from all over Europe were competing together in a large bracketed tournament. And I, I didn't even know it was happening, and I really had no interest in it. But I really enjoyed watching my friends be very impassioned in their um, in their fandom of this, uh, you know, high-level soccer. Um, I mean, yes, when big things like the World Cup come around, I'll, I will get on the bandwagon and I'll be very interested for a month or so. Um, and I do like to, you know, watch the Cinderella stories of various teams going through the brackets and, and you know, overcoming... Uh, and insurmountable odds or making fantastic plays or you know upsetting a big team or something like that coming from behind to win all those those wonderful sports stories that we latch on to and, and look for but soccer or really professional sports as a whole really haven't been my thing but i love watching other people get excited about their fandom and their uh team or the sport that they're very passionate about and so as my friends were uh, getting really involved in this text thread that i was just sort of sitting back and and being a spectator to i really appreciated their love and passion for the beautiful game and then one of my friends made an interesting point that that soccer football Uh, was an amazing analogy with um, kind of the movement and dance that is the liturgy. You know, if if liturgy is the movement and the the flow of how we go about performing the act of worship, uh, much in the same way that uh, soccer is is a dance that uh, illustrates a beautiful form of the marriage of athleticism and sport, storied championships and moves, and all those all those kinds of things that we enjoy, um, especially team sport. And then another uh, one of my friends uh, got in and said, "No, no, no! Soccer is not the analogy for worship and liturgy. It's baseball. American baseball is is the definitive sport to use as the analogy for worship and liturgy." And then he went off on, on his, his uh, reasonings for that. And I, I really appreciated all of my sports-minded friends getting into this, you know, long discussion about, uh, you know, what sport is the analogy of uh, liturgy or worship? And, and kind of how do we feel, what does that tell us about our love of worship or our love of liturgy um, when we try to compare it to other things? And, and what are we singling out or what are we highlighting as important um, elements for things like liturgy and worship uh, when we start comparing them to like soccer or baseball or, or, or other similar activity might be? Um, and so I, <laughs> but I'm sitting here in this long text thread and I'm just like, do I need to care about this? Sh- should I? Should I care about this? And that's when it made me think. If the Bible says that you're not supposed to covet your neighbor's possessions, the flip side of that would be, uh, what happens if your neighbor comes and unloads all of their interests and ideas, uh, their you know mental and um, intellectual possessions, onto you? At what point do you have to care about what your neighbor is essentially thrusting upon you? You know, all, you know, all of this, this fandom. And then that made me think about, is this what other people feel like when I'm going into a real big like Marvel or comic book or science fiction, Star Trek kind of uh, fandom at them? If I'm spouting off all of my fandom at someone, is this what I sound like when I'm making a particularly nerdy sermon or... Uh, discussing a particularly nerdy topic, much like this podcast, probably so. I mean, I, I, I need to be more cognizant of of what others are kindly doing when they listen to me uh, just go full tilt on my own fandom. Um, and so I, I looked up what the Bible says about uh, entertaining people's interests, 
And so here are some examples. Number one, Acts 17, verse 23. Uh, the Apostle Paul is, uh, to give some backstory, is uh, trying to speak to established churches and create rapport with them. Um, and at one point he says, uh, in verse 28, uh, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And that is the quote. For we are also his offspring is the quote of the poets of the Athenians to which uh, Paul is making reference. So here we have Paul understanding his audience and their current level of understanding and using uh, uh, parts of their uh, cultural knowledge, their shared knowledge, and using it as reference to something he is uh, trying to teach. He's being an ambassador of knowledge and understanding. He's finding ways uh, to share commonalities between himself and his audience to build a mutual understanding and to foster uh, a growth in the gospel, a growth in understanding. And it's this demonstration of, of commonality and bridge building uh, that allows his message to uh, bridge over into the Athenian uh, zeitgeist and in their common knowledge. Now, moving on to a second example. Let's say uh, Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Philippians says, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of of others. I'll say that again. Let each of you not look only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. I think that pretty much says it. We have to hold up each other, and that includes um, uh, a tender care for each other's interests, because that is a reflection of our personality that helps us create relationship. And I would pretty much agree if we're going to be in relationship with people, as is pretty uh, clear about, you know, the, the, the whole push of the gospel is to love your neighbor as yourself, to create relationship and to be in relationship. That includes uh, putting up with the interests of others. Now, Going back to my friend's sports uh, fandom, that doesn't mean I have to become a, a soccer fan because my friends are soccer fans. However, having a cultural literacy of sports would help me uh, relate to those individuals better. Uh, just like when you're moving into a new place or a new town, getting to uh, you know share some common interest or at least becoming more culturally literate with like say new co-workers interests helps you have conversation and build those bridges because as first john uh, chapter 2 verse 6 says whoever says he abides in him in christ ought to walk in the same way in which he christ walked whoever uh, says he abides in christ ought to walk the same way that christ walked and I think that really kind of goes back to reinforce the Philippians message that if uh, if we say we walk with Christ, then we should walk as Christ. And Christ's whole message was uh, loving your neighbor, uh, being in relationship, being one in the body of Christ, and 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 helping uh, create a unity of humanity that uh, that lifts up the whole kingdom of God. So, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Now, I think that pretty much answers it. However, all I've done in this reflection is to cherry-pick single lines from various books of Scripture and to use them to support a message that I want. That is proof texting, and it doesn't tell the whole story. So yes, I'm doing the thing that I always uh, caution people not to do, which is cherry-pick single lines of Scripture. Because let's face it, you can, you can ask Scripture to uh, defend whatever position you want and with uh, careful uh, pruning and picking. Um, 
but I think that th- when you look at the whole scope of the gospel message of Jesus, it's pretty evident that, you know, yes, we should take the time to um, care for the interests of others um, because that is how we build bridges. And yeah, the Philippians line may not be talking about, you know, interests as far as like your hobby or your fandom. It might be talking much more about your um, worldly interests, like making sure you have a fair wage, you have a roof over your head, you're getting plenty of food, plenty of medical care, plenty of, you know, life-sustaining support. That might be the interest uh, of the people that, that Philippians is really referencing. But I think beyond that, you know, especially if you're in a group that is established and healthy and sustaining, then you can free yourselves up to uh, support and be mindful of the interests of people that maybe are a little less necessary, like you know, a love of sports, a love of crochet, a love of comic books, a love of you know. Uh, beer brewing or, you know, what, whatever the interest might be, uh, uh, being a history buff, for example. Um, I think uh, holding each other in love involves holding each other's interests in love. Uh, you know, my wife and I have very uh, different uh, areas of interest, but we still respect and love each other um, as we go about examining those hobbies. Um, she likes to garden, and so that doesn't mean that I, you know, want to go learn every name of every plant that's in our yard. Um, but I do support her in her gardening, and that does mean at times getting out there with a wheelbarrow and moving a bunch of dirt around. Likewise, she loves uh, she loves me, and with me comes a love of comic book movies, and so she lets me uh, just go off and, and, and tear through some, you know, some Marvel movies or some comic book or some, some Star Trek or something. And I appreciate that she lets me just sort of nerd out and, and sort of do that. Or if I need to have some friends over to come do that, that, you know, she is comfortable, she is comfortable enough to not have to be the one that sits down and watches Star Trek with me. Um, but she's happy to go ahead and let me invite others that will come and share in that love and appreciation. You know, I don't think she would play Dungeons and Dragons, although if she wants to, I'm more than happy to. But uh, I'm glad that every once in a while I'll get to have a good night playing some uh, some board games with some uh, some ladies and gents that 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 do need that as a part of their recharge and their uh, relaxation. So that's all the time we have for this episode of the Church Nerd Podcast. Thank you for your careful attention and listening. Uh, if you want to know more about the podcast, check out thechurchnerd.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please email me at andrew at thechurchnerd.com. Thank you, and as always, God bless. <laughs>